now in public um, and in committee business. I have a list uh, of speakers. Um, so far, I have Mr. Barrett, Mr. Baines, Ms. Khalid, Mr. Vilmuir. Is there anybody else that wants to be on that list? Uh, Point of order, Mr. Chair. Uh, just hang on, Mr. Baines. I, I have a I, question of privilege. Question of privilege? privilege? I'd like to raise a question of privilege. Okay. Uh, just can you hang on a sec? I'll come back to you in a sec. Uh, je m'excuse, Monsieur Villemur, mais... So Apologies, Mr. Villemur. You are fourth on the list. Right. Um, Mr. Baines, uh, I think you'll have to wait until you have the floor. I'm just going to confirm that with the clerk because I've not dealt with a question of privilege at committee before. So, just give me a second, please. It was for everything. So, Mr. Baines, uh, the, the question of privilege, um, having not dealt with this before at committee, I need to determine what the reasons are for the question of privilege uh, and an explanation of such. I cannot, I cannot determine whether, in fact, there is a question of privilege to be determined. Uh, that is up to the Speaker of the House to determine that. So, so... Uh, well, Mr. Mr. I Baines can, has the floor here. I can add so. to it. So I, I'd like to raise a question of privilege. It's in regards to statements made last week in the committee that I want to respond to some accusations that have been made against me. So the accusations were made in committee. Just hang on, Michael, please. So Just a point it's of in order. relation. Is it a question of privilege or a point of order that you're it's raising? A question of privilege. No. So just uh, bear with me, bear with me uh, again. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Chair, no. I just, add before you suspend, that's uh, okay. just let me suspend because, Chair, to be fair, no, to be fair, I have not dealt with this I before. Have clerk out. That's all. I have not. Well, the clerk, I'm sure, doesn't need the help, but I am going to suspend for a few minutes because I want to be better prepared on how to deal with this, and I think it's, uh, I think it's incumbent upon me as chair to make sure that we do the right thing here not having uh, experienced this in the past. So I'm going to suspend.
Not having dealt with uh, this matter before, uh, I want to make it. Uh, I want to be very sure that, uh, from a procedural standpoint, that uh, we're doing all the correct things. Now, Mr. Baines, when we left, you you uh, raised your hand on a question of privilege. I am going to allow you to state uh, what you believe the uh, question of privilege is, um, and if you want to go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, so as I stated, um, I'm raising the question of privilege with regards to statements made last week in committee, and I wanted to respond to some of the accusations that have been made um, in the committee, and uh, I'd like for the committee to sort of decide if we can, if it should go to the Speaker of the House. So, page 57 of the third edition of the House of Commons Procedure and Practice describes parliamentary privilege as the rights and immunities that are deemed necessary for the House of Commons as an institution and its members as representatives of the electorate to fulfill their functions. Page 88 outlines that, quote, members individually have the responsibility to not abuse their rights and immunities, particularly freedom of speech, end quote. On page 112, there's a quote from Speaker Fraser in 1987 Quote, the privileges are of a member are violated by any action which might impede him or her in the fulfillment of his or her duties and functions. It is obvious that the unjust damaging of a reputation could constitute such an impediment, end quote. Furthermore, Mr. Chair, on page 619, it states that, quote, remarks which questions a member's integrity honesty or character are not in order. A member will be requested to withdraw offense remarks, allegations or accusations of impropriety directed towards another member." End quote. During our last meeting, Mr. Brock made false claims and allegations of collusion towards me in an effort to intimidate and bully me to impede my work as a member of parliament. This raises a, to a prima facie, facie case of intimidation and threat to my reputation. In 2021, I was approached by members of the community and encouraged to run for office. And I'm very honored to be representing the people of Steveson Richmond East. I stood for office to speak to my values and my vision for Canada. I was elected by the community where I've lived in my entire life because they know me and they trust me, and they know I can represent them here in Canada's Parliament. I ran to help build a better Richmond, a better BC, and a better Canada for the present and future generations. Things like building trade links, greening the economy, and improving government efficiency. And that's one of the key th reasons I actually chose I was one of, I think, two people that only chose to sit on the Mighty Ogle Committee. I know other members sit on, on the committee with me. And it was to improve the management of taxpayer dollars. I was motivated at the time to do a spending review and apply to how taxpayer funds are used by departments, but also here on Parliament Hill, to find savings without impacting services on programs, closing loopholes. And I say that sincerely, Mr. Chair 
this was the spirit behind the motion that I tried to raise last committee meeting. I gave notice on Friday, May, th May 17th, a motion to study a clear abuse of taxpayer dollars, in this case, committed by dozens of members of the Conservative Caucus, including the members opposite. However, last week, Mr. Brock filibustered his own motion and abused his parliamentary privilege to issue a flurry of allegations against me in, uh, intended to intimidate, impede, and commit character assassination. Rather than accept the slightest measure of accountability for his personal and unethical actions and avoid voting on an issue that would place him and others in a clear conflict of interest. Yeah. On Mr. Chu, having known about Mr. Chu's claims for three years, the member opposite had plenty of opportunities to bring this motion forward. Only when I, in the course of carrying out my work as an MP to shed light on a spending loophole and a, p a potential unethical abuse of taxpayer dollars, did he come forward with these accusations? Mr. Chair, I think you can also attest to my participation in this committee. I try to work with everyone. I, I, I try to be nonpartisan as much as possible. And I, I work honestly and, and try to get to the heart of the matter of all of the issues that we raise in this important committee. The timing of their motion confirms that it has been made in bad faith, motivated purely by partisanship and malicious intent. Mr. Brock's accusations, the tax were not just aimed at me, but also at Justice Hogue and her findings, which when he repeats the falsehood that, quote, they, the CCP, got the outcome they wanted, they got the Liberal government in power again, end quote. These statements couldn't clash more with the Justice Hogue's findings. The report indicated clearly that Canada's electoral systems remain sound, that's a quote. And the evidence shows that foreign interference did not impact the integrity of Canada's electoral system in 2019 and 2021. Justice Hoag also said that none of the evidence she's heard to date suggests officials acted in, quote, bad faith, unquote. Yet this is what Mr. Brock accused me of. These findings hold with what Mr. Chu said at the committee last year. He made no accusations of my being involved. He only went so far as to allege that I benefited from the supposed interference. And now he's also himself changing the story. He actually went on radio during his many interviews after losing, especially on CKNW, and said he knows about the work I've done in the community and he knows me to be a good man. Ironically, while at committee, my former opponent engaged in the very conduct he and Mr. Brock indict me and accuse me of impropriety and doing nothing to counter and even purposely spreading CCP misinformation and disinformation. Specifically, Mr. Chu now claims that I labeled his bill and his leader as racist as part of his evidence, that I was spreading CCP misinformation in an attempt to damage and is, is an attempt to damage my reputation and, quite frankly, trying to bully me. This is a lie. I never spoke about Mr. Chu during the election. I didn't have to. I spoke about myself. I was raised in Richmond. I'm a local guy, local community guy. I don't work against people, I work around them. I only talked about myself and what I could do. I said on the matter of the, um, um, the registry, I said I couldn't support something that is viewed to be discriminatory. And this was during a wave of anti-Asian hate. You all recall that that was a post-COVID time when anti-Asian hate was on the rise in the city of Richmond, specifically. There was a case where a hot coffee was spilled, and it was well known, documented across Canada, or covered across Canada. A hot coffee was spilled on an elderly Chinese lady. That, court, that case went to court, and it was proved to be a hate crime. This is happening at the same time. And having been through, and at the same time, Many members of the community came to me and said, no one ever stands with us, including Mr. Chu. I never mentioned his name. But they told me that Mr. Chu or other leaders in the community don't stand with us and they don't help us. Having been through the report and assuming Justice Hogue examined the 2021 uh, Stevenson Richmond East election in some detail, 
I know of such no such conclusions made by Justice Hogue to match the ones made in the sensationalist and fundamentally false statements by, made by Mr. Brock in the committee last week. After three years of Mr. Chu making his claims, including numerous appearances at committees and the inquiry where he reluctantly admitted to not collecting and retaining any of the supposed evidence from the election, and he also said that CSIS never got back to him, the RCMP never got back to him, as well as over 10 months of investigations by uh, Johnson and Hogue, nothing in the way of serious evidence has emerged. This is why the statements in the report referring to Steve and Rich Meese are qualified with could, possibly. While I may not be a lawyer, I can be certain that if the member opposite, and we know he's a very experienced litigator, he's told us many times, walked into the chambers and told the judge they needed to convict somebody based on coulds and maybes and possiblies, I think he knows the result would be he'd be sent out very quickly. The fact is serious claims require serious evidence and neither Mr. Chu or Mr. Brock have been able to provide even ordinary evidence to support their very serious claims. This case is not without precedent as evidenced by a decision of Speaker Milliken in November 2010. In response to a point of order raised by a member for Scarborough Rogue River about a negative attack delivered by the member for Brandt against the member for Ajax Pickering, the Speaker found that this violated parliamentary procedure and previous rulings of the Speaker. Speaker Milliken concluded that, quote, for all the reasons, after careful review of the statement of the member for Brandt, the Chair finds that it constituted a personal attack on the member for Ajax Pickering and that it was an inappropriate use of a statement made pursuant to SO31 Therefore, I call upon the member for Brandt to withdraw his comments, end quote. It's clear, Mr. Chair, that personal attacks against members are out of order and should not be allowed to proceed. But if Mr. Brock is looking for evidence of intimidation and disregard of the Chinese community, he needs to look no further than the government of the past. And I think I've made these comments before as well. The Conservative Prime Minister, Stevenson Harper, uh, Harper he allowed, the, they, he approved CCP police officers to come on Canadian soil and police their community here. Ultimately, intimidation and repatriate Chinese Canadians back to their home country, striking fear into the heart of the community. This happened. And the Conservatives did this to curry favour with the dictatorship in Beijing at the time. They now claim to oppose. I do believe the registry has merits. I, I, I'll, I'll make some comments on that. We heard from Mr. Stanton, uh, Mr. Stanton who was the CSIS director, a managing director former, um, that, but they are also limited as it cannot target the proxies. I proactively reached out to CSIS after after the election, and I told them, I said, hey, I need your help. I want to know a little bit more about these, the, these issues that have been coming up. And they also said that the registry doesn't have much teeth, and it, and it doesn't address the issue of the proxy. So m instead, Mr. Stanton recommended Parliament focus more on the Security of Information Act as the best way to tackle foreign interference, and this has been a focus of mine during my time as an MP. I also collaborated with MP Dollywall to draft the M112 motion to combat foreign intimidation on diaspora communities. And that was unanimously recently passed in the House of Commons. Rather than simply imposing a reactionary tool to address foreign interference and expecting it to fix the problem, Bill C-70 to modernize Canada's security establishment has also been put forward. And we'll be, I'll be speaking on that as well it will more actively pursue foreign actors bent on causing harm to Canadians. We're dealing with misinformation and disinformation. It's information, and the focus should be on the security of information. 
My former opponent also claims I was engaging in misinformation by misle misleading voters that the Conservative Party would eliminate the assault rifle ban if elected. But this was not misinformation. This was actually a CPC party platform. At the same time, Mr. Chu was actively spreading mis misinformation, disseminating actual flyers. I never spoke about Mr. Chu, like I mentioned earlier, throughout the whole campaign. I never said his name once. I didn't talk about him. I didn't have to. He actually was handing out flyers saying I was going to legalize hard drugs in Richmond. Neither of these were 2021 LPC platform and neither are the law of the land today. <coughs> Rather, it's Mr. Brock and the CPC who have been sitting on their hands while claims of foreign interference run rife in the Conservative Party. And I think I've raised some of these issues before as well. Mr. Brock frequently made references to uh, a former uh, leader O'Toole's claims that up to eight ridings were affected by foreign interference in the 2021 election. But Mr. Brock doesn't seem to take Mr. O'Toole's recent claims of interference by the government in China contributing to him being ousted as a leader of the Conservative Party. Mr. O'Toole even purports that CBC member and former member of the CPC National Council, Bert Chen, who was suspended from the party's National Council after launching the petition to recall O'Toole as a leader, was involved. It gets worse. More than 100 Iranian Canadians sent a letter to Conservative leader Pierre Polyev on Tuesday calling for an investigation of the party's handling of allegations. Mr. 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 Baines. Point of order, Chair. Can I just... Point of order, Chair. Okay. We're going to go on your point of order, and then I'm going to come back to Mr. Baines. So go ahead. So in, in the... In the meandering uh, offering of uh, Mr. Baines, he's he's talking about things that have actually occurred since the meeting where he claims that the offense against his privilege was taken. <coughs> so this is this is. Uh, I believe it's all relevant. Well, very to the very much, and I'm and I'm sure he believes it's relevant. But chair, I'm not sure um, which. Uh, uh, got, specifically, which point of order he's referring to um, from the standing orders, chair. Rel relevance is the first thing, Chair. I, I, so I, I, on a I question of privilege, so, Chair. So, so, Ms. Khalid, can you hang on, please? Go ahead, Mr. Barrett. I, I think I've got your point, and I actually, I actually and got on the microphone almost at the same time that you the, did. The so. Speaker of the House, Chair, yep. has also, uh, in practice, limited the length of time for questions of privilege raised in the chamber. And, yep. uh, and, and having That's done the, that, yep. the, the, the okay. scope that members offering their points has to be very tight mm -hmm. or um, speakers, the deputy speaker and the assistant deputy speakers have sat members down okay. when they've turned into uh, I'll, I'll a soapbox. I've, I've, soap I've got that point, uh, Mr. Barrett. And, and I'll tighten it up, Mr. 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 For, Baines, uh, I was going to make this point yeah. that your question of privilege needs to relate to the issue of you feeling like your privilege has been, has been breached. Um, I am just the, the, giving the a comparison here. That, that, that's fine, yeah. but in relation <laughs> to to what you're talking about, then it has to it has to be germane to that. Okay. What I'm not looking for uh, in making my ruling of whether your privilege or whether I think your privilege has has been breached is to relitigate the issues Noted. that have been before this committee in the past. And I will remind you, sir, that. Mr. Chu's uh, testimony is a matter of privilege. He's covered by parliamentary privilege in this room. So I'm going to ask you to keep it succinct as it relates to you feeling like your privilege has been breached, not to relitigate or debate uh, what's happened either in the past or uh, in this uh, committee uh, with witnesses. So please go ahead, sir. If you can be succinct and wrap it up, I would appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and I will. I'm, I'm almost there. So uh, as, as I indicated, um, I was just showing a comparison of, of some of the points that have been raised here um, and, and are uh, chosen to be um, viewed differently if, it, if it's one side of the equation here versus the other. So I, I, I just was raising some of those uh, issues as a comparison to really shed light on, you know, what takes place here and, and how I am feeling. So uh, I just feel neither Mr. Brock nor any of the other CPC MPs seem to treat these claims with certainty. Uh, that Point of order, Chair. 
go ahead again on your uh, point of order. Uh, again, Chair. with respect to your ruling, Chair, yeah. uh, requesting that the member um, be succinct and speak okay. exactly to how his privileges were breached. What he's offering is opinion on mm -hmm. uh, perceptions of members of another party about um, issues in, in the news. I, yeah. I, I fail to see how what I think about something or how I treat something, like, for example, um, foreign interference, um, how that has anything to do with his claims that another member of this committee or that his privileges were breached. If he has a specific allegation with Mr. respect... Mr. Brock made with, accusations with, with, against with, me. I'm Chair, speaking to that. I, I'm not asking for a cross-discussion uh, here, if, please. If, if, the member, if the member has something specific that yep. relates to his privilege being breached, he should cite the event, cite the evidence, mm -hmm. and then the chair needs to make a ruling. But what this, this yep. is, Chair... This is gratuitous at yeah. best. So, uh, Mr. Baines, Mr. Barrett does bring up a good point. Uh, we are all experienced members of Parliament. We have seen questions of privileges uh, being raised in the House of Commons. Uh, in fact, I have raised several questions of privileges in my experience as a House leader. Uh, most of those, many of those, all of those questions of privileges are related to how the privileges of members have been breached. There's very specific references to not just the historical context, but also under the Green Book, how those, how those privileges have been breached. Never have I stood in the House on a question of privilege and litigated what's gone on, uh, either at this committee or what's been the subject of news sources outside of this committee. So I am going to ask you to... Uh, to I will conclude. To conclude. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Baines. So Mr. Baines has concluded his discussion. No, no, no. I will, okay. I will give you Sorry, a conclusion my, here. <laughs> my misunderstanding. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to wrap it up yeah, real quick. I'll wrap and, it up. And, and if there's up. another intervention, then uh, by myself, uh, then... I'll speak to, to... So I believe I've already made me several references to the accusations, allegations made by Mr. Brock. Uh, so to conclude, Mr. Brock's motion is clearly designed as a personal threat. It's intended to inflict reputational damage, intimidate me using false or unverifiable information, designed to impede me in my role as a member of the House of Commons, making statements against members without evidence or making false allegations is a matter of serious concern for all members, and I look forward to your ruling, Mr. Chair. Okay, so thank you uh, for raising that question of privilege, uh, Mr. Baines. Um, the Chair uh, does take serious, I do see your hand, Mr. Uh, Couric. On the question of privilege, do you have anything to add in relation to this question of privilege? I'm going to remind members that I'm not interested in debate. On the point of if order. There, if, on, on a point of order. On a point of order. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Couric. Sorry, Chair. I, I am before um, uh, entering into discussion. I believe that uh, uh, within the framework of privileged discussions at committee, I would ask for clarity from from you, and if you need to take time to discuss with the clerk, I, I respect that, absolutely. Um, but on a point of order, just so that we can understand what the framework for which a discussion continuing would or would not look like, and whether we would expect a ruling from you, whether or not there is a motion forthcoming. Um, noted that I'm that Mr. Baines has given up the floor without having moved a motion, and I believe I'm next on the speaking list. So um, I, I would uh, just ask for clarity, Chair, on a point of order before we proceed with the, uh, the question. Point of order, Chair. No debate. Okay, so I appreciate uh, you bringing that up, uh, Mr. Couric. I have heard uh, the information that's been provided by uh, Mr. Baines. Uh, I will advise the committee that the chair takes very seriously these issues of, of question of privilege. Uh, similarly to what the Speaker of the House has done, uh, I will take the information 
I am going to go back and discuss this with the clerk and come back with a later ruling. Um, so that's what I'm prepared to do at this point. Okay, so thank you for raising that, Mr. Baines. So, um, I'm sorry, just seeking clarification, Chair. Uh, yep. What does that mean? It means I'm going to come back with a ruling on the question of privilege once I look at all, the, all of the information that's been presented by Mr. Baines, uh, other information as it relates to what's in the book, and uh, some of the discussion that went on in the past. Do you mean in a few minutes? He has to come back now. And so just uh, just for clarity as well that it's not uh, it's not me that is going to determine whether there is a, a question of privilege here